You know, my earliest memory of walking into a room that I had to be silent in was the library. You would literally have signs everywhere saying silence, in big bold letters. But why? Are we not supposed to disturb the books? More likely that people want to read in silence. But why? Today, I'm talking to you about the sound of silence. That awkward silence, or that pregnant pause, or that moment of peace, quiet, and meditation. Now, according to your standard dictionary definition, silence means the absence of sound or noise. But is that even possible? Well, I've been working in radio for over a decade and in podcasting for the last five years, and audio has always fascinated me. I was that kid with the boombox in my room, listening to the radio and recording the coolest songs on black cassettes. So from a radio news editor to a presenter to a podcaster and now a podcast producer, of course, the hazard of my job is that I work with quite a few audio engineers, sound recordists, and sound designers. So I asked them whether absolute silence is possible. And according to them, there is no such thing as dead silence. We don't live in a vacuum. Every place on earth has some ambience. Except for one particular exception an anechoic chamber. It's basically a non-reflective, echo-free room, and it's designed to absorb sound or electromagnetic waves and its reflections. Supposedly, it's so silent in there, you can actually hear your heartbeat. Now, I did a little digging to see if there was one in India, and I found out that IIT Kanpur has an anechoic chamber. Um, just to give you an idea of what an anechoic chamber actually looks like, I'm going to pop a picture of right here. Now, when I'm talking about the anechoic chamber, right, it's non-reflective. So what would be a room that has a lot of reflections? I'm going to give you an example. So, you know, when you're sitting in the toilet and you're doing your business and you suddenly get a phone call. So when you answer your phone, it always happens that the person on the other end of the line would be like, bro, are you in the loo, bro? And you're like, oh my God, how did they know? Well, it's because of the way sound echoes. Tile, glass, marble, they're all very reflective surfaces for sound. Now, if you don't have an anechoic chamber handy, um, you can still create silence digitally, but why would you need silence? What does it even mean? So one of the most famous forms of silence is by an American experimental composer called John Cage, who in 1952 composed 433. Basically, the score instructs performers not to play their instruments during the entire duration of the piece. The pianist basically goes to the piano, doesn't hit any of the keys for four minutes and 33 seconds. He actually uses a stopwatch to time himself. So in other words, the entire piece consists of silence. Now, on the one hand, as a musical piece, 433 leaves no room for interpretation by the pianist. As long as he checks the stopwatch, he can't play it too slow or too fast, he can't hit the wrong keys, he can't play it too loud or too melodramatically or too subtly. So what do you hear when you listen to 433 is more like a matter of chance. Nothing in 433 is anything that the composer actually wrote. Now, 433 is often described as a silent piece, but it isn't silent at all. While the performer makes as little sound as possible, John Cage broke the traditional boundaries of our understanding of music by shifting from the stage to the audience. 
you start to become really aware of the sound around you because of the silence. You hear like people shifting in their she seats, sorry, people shifting in their seats. You might also hear like a ringing in your ear or traffic outside or the air conditioning. And it's what I guess you'd expect to hear. It's mundane. Some of it might be a bit profound, very intimate, maybe even cosmic. But whatever it is, it is your experience. And it's deeply personal music to you. Each person is actually creating their own reaction to that music. No two people will hear 433 in the same way. The stage actually shifts and the audience and the world around become the performer. Now, I have like a really interesting fact and you know, John Cage's 433, his composition, was actually inspired by an anechoic chamber at Harvard University. Now, John Cage actually entered the chamber expecting to hear silence, but he heard two sounds, a high one and a low one. And he actually described this to the engineer in charge, who said that the high one was his nervous system in operation and the low one was his blood circulation. Now, John Cage had gone to a place where he expected total silence and yet heard sound. This realization made him understand that there is an impossibility of silence. And that's what got him to compose 433. Now, going back to my sound designers, they basically use silence as quite a powerful tool. It can create an intensity or heightened emotion during a scene. It can amplify the drama taking place between characters. Silence can also drum up fear. I'm sure many of you have seen scary movies where there is like silence before like a big noise. That's actually a trick of perception. You bring in, so you bring down the level of ambient sound to complete silence and then boom, you hear this like big sound and perceptively it seems louder because of the quiet that's been created before it. Also, when you suddenly take all the sound out, it gives you goosebumps because you're not really used to a sudden silence. It's a massive shock to the system. Also, absolutely no sound can be really disorienting for a person you start to lose your sense of direction and we actually understand our surroundings through the noise around us. Like when you hear a car coming from behind you, you will instinctively move out of the way. Now I've told you about what my sound designers and audio engineers think and feel about silence. But what does silence mean to me? Now, as I mentioned before, my career began on the radio where silence meant dead air. Yep, I'm not even kidding. It is called dead air. So if you hear dead air on the radio, there would be a crazy scramble to throw music on or push your fader up, talk, say something. Dead air was bad for radio. It meant that the broadcast had stopped and there was something seriously wrong. However, my relationship with silence actually changed dramatically when I started making podcasts. There is no such thing as dead air on a podcast. Silence was important. It carried weight. It was heavy with emotion. I'll give you an example. Last year, 2020, as we all know, was very difficult. And for my podcast, because studios were shut, I began recording voiceovers in my cupboard and I created like this little booth for myself. Actually, I'm gonna show you a little picture of my booth so you can see where I was recording in my cupboard and how I was recording in my cupboard. So in December last year, I was recording my best of 2020 voiceover and I got really emotional. I got to this bit in the voiceover where I started thanking my listeners and for all their support of me and the show. And I got 
really teary and overwhelmed with the fields. So I calmed myself down, wiped my eyes, and I did my voiceover again. But exactly at that same spot, I got super weepy. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? And every time I tried to re-record that bit, I would just get really emotional. And I realized like, why am I fighting this? I'm just gonna keep it in there. So I kept that little bit of me having like a little breakdown um, in the podcast episode. So I'm actually going to play you the, the clip so you can hear how it sounds. That was Diaconic by Sean Vincent to Paul on Made in India. To end this friendly gallop through the best of 2020 on your one and only indie podcast is a tune by someone I would like to call the Jamiroquai of India, Azaman Hoyboy. Azaman is a really underrated and underground talent in my opinion and deserves to explode on the scene. I have to admit that I truly feel like the luckiest person that I get a chance to experience some of the most incredible music coming out of this country on Made in India. I hope I get a chance to keep opening that door of discovery to the world I see in here. Thank you to all of you for always supporting me and the show. Your love and kindness means more to me than you can possibly imagine. Man, my team told me I was going to have a complete meltdown at some point. They were right. <laughs> so now, in a year that started out with hope, and I think still has us hoping for a better year in 2021, here's Azaman Hoyboy with everybody looking for love. I know. Very, very emotional at 2020. Okay. <laughs> so, um,. I sent this raw audio file to my editor who basically puts the whole episode together and he sent me the episode and the usual practice or protocol is that like my editor would cut out all the gaps but in taking out those gaps he took out the emotion okay you know what it's better if i actually play it out for you so you can hear what i mean I have to admit that I truly feel like the luckiest person that I get a chance to experience some of the most incredible music coming out of this country on Made in India. I hope I get a chance to keep opening that door of discovery to the world I see in here. Thank you to all of you for always supporting me and the show. Your love and kindness means more to me than you can possibly imagine. Man, my team told me I was gonna have a complete meltdown at some point. They were right. <laughs> so now, in a year that started out with hope and I think still has us hoping for a better year in 2021. Here's Azaman Hoyboy with everybody looking for love. So that was the edited clip that my editor had sent me and it had all the gaps cut out. Makes a huge difference those silences, right? I actually asked my editor to go back and put the silences back in and go back to the original version and keep the voiceover as it was. Because the silence was meaningful. It was where the raw feelings were. And silence isn't dead air. Silence is where the unsaid resides. Thank you.